All right, so this is the Wild Mile, the first floating park of its kind, um, really anywhere. And essentially, what we're doing here is trying to create a habitat and ecosystem and open space in areas which are previously industrialized and really um, engineered around stopping access from, from people and, and wildlife. And so um, the way we do that, we have these series of floating boardwalks which are anchored to the river bottom using chain and elastics. And so they stretch, they can move up and down as the river level changes, allowing us to really create something that, that is, uh, they could fit into this type of you know, river ins inside an urbanized river system. Um, and then we have these floating gardens and these things work by, we put all sorts of native plants on top. The roots actually grow through these units, they hang below and they create structure and habitat for fish and other wildlife. And so the bottom is really good for aquatic habitat, and, you know, turtles, things like that, fish. Um, and the top creates uh, space for pollinators, birds, and other, other mammals to kind of come on. And so, you know, really doing this um, is trying to offset a lot of kind of the, the existing infrastructure, these steel and concrete sheet pile walls that are common throughout the entire world in their urban waterways. By building these things, we're hoping to really usher in the next kind of phase in thinking around how do we engage with our rivers inside of cities? You know, what do we do? How do we take this space, which is, you know, over the past 150 years, really been transformed for barges and other kind of large marine vessels, but is now no longer really used for them. I mean, take that and then build it into a space that uh, kind of meet some of the challenges that we face today. Lack of access to green space, uh, dwindling natural uh, habitat areas. How do we take that? How do we build those within this stuff? So that's really the, the kind of ethos behind this project. Um, and yeah, we'll walk through and talk more about it. Right here is kind of an example of some of the different things we're, we're testing. Right here, you can see um, we added a tree. So floating tree is really testing out different species and seeing how exactly they work, um, what their survivability is like, you know, what the substrates we should use to really um, ensure that they live for a long time and, and kind of function. So, you know, it's one pilot piece which we looked at and are then adapting and implementing more in kind of future designs. So an early piece that then transferred over and lessons learned um, really influenced the, the future designs and you know how we kind of went about it. So you can see also right here, um, beautiful button bush. So some of the shrubs, one of the first uh, pieces in this. So really trying to get that height, which you know a lot of these trees and shrubs are really great habitat for birds and other species that are kind of lacking in a lot of areas. So seeing if we could try to implement those in different ways is really important. So we have, you know, swamp rose mallow, hibiscus mosquitoes, um, which you can see over there is flowering, these big kind of dinner plate size pink and white and uh, red flowers. And so that's a really, really good native. It provides a lot of habitat for pollinators and other things. But one of the key aspects is trying to increase kind of the seed bank in the whole ecosystem. So you can see take it off. We have these, um, the seed pods that kind of come out. And so these things over time, they'll get eaten by birds or you kind of, you know, distributed by wind and other things like that. Um, and they'll start to show up on the banks around here. And so one of the really interesting things that we've started to see is, um, the hibiscus that is planted around the river has started to, um, blossom in some of these areas that previously didn't have it. So you can tell that the, the seed bank has been distributing and it's really making an impact. And so the more of this type of stuff we can do, the more we'll get some of these, uh, these natives kind of proliferate the area. So if you ever are here and you see them, take some and toss them somewhere. So one of the things that you'll notice if you go into an urbanized river system, you know, such as the Chicago River, the benthic layer, the, the the floor of the river 
is really unnatural. Normally it's a lot of this fluffy muck. Um, there's not a lot of sticks and other things that you normally find or sand and rocks. And so what that ends up happening is a lot of the species that kind of normally occupy the bottom of a river um, don't really have the habitat they need to survive and to procreate and uh, live on. So one of the things we have been testing is these submerged platforms. So these are uh, basically uh, baskets, you know, same as the gardens that just hang about a foot or so below the river surface. And we add in sand and rocks and things like that um, to try to emulate that river bottom. Uh, one of the other things we do is try to um, add different species that used to be, you know, pretty prolific here and try to add them back into the into the system. So we have these mussel bunkers. So they're basically these bins that have sand in them and we get, uh, in the wintertime, we find pregnant mussels up in more naturalized areas of the river, bring them to the DuPage uh, County Forest Preserve's Urban Stream Research Center. They rear them there, so they basically put them in a tank with a fish so that the mussels can, um, can you know, grow up. Um, and when they're big enough, they, we then transplant them back into the river and put them in these bunkers to uh, let them kind of grow to maturity. Um, one of the knock-on effects though is with the sand and all these rocks and things like that, we've seen a lot of fish spawning in these areas and, and hanging out here. So we've seen um, a bass den that was down there. Uh, we've had pumpkin seed and other fish like that that really take over the area. So, you know, looking at that, you know, we're really trying to then see, okay, this is working. How can we kind of scale this up? How can we add more, uh, more square footage of this and uh, try different things out. So yeah, I'll uh, show you real quick um, one of the native species that are in these areas are these mussels. So these ones are the ones that were putting in giant floaters. Um, they're pretty common in, in more naturalized areas of the river, but they're and they're very hardy. They're, they're kind of a generalist species, so they don't need too much to survive, but um, these ones, they filter, you know, around 10 gallons of water per day per mussel. And they used to be, you know, in the millions and millions in the Chicago River before we dredged the river, physically removing them, dammed the river, blocking their access, and, um, you know, really created a benthic layer that is fluffy and kind of inhospitable to them. So, yeah, they'll suck in a lot of the debris and other things floating in the, in the water column. Um, and then deposit it into the sediment. But in that process, they'll do things such as increase the water clarity, which then means light can penetrate deeper, which then you get other things such as aquatic plants and things that you also find in a river system able to, to live there. So it really has a lot of benefits uh, for one kind of piece of the whole infrastructure. So trying to figure out how to, how to bring those back is, is pretty important. So one of the design aspects that we looked at is trying to create um, kind of the illusion of, of space and, and bring people in and out of different rooms and, and zones. So part of the design, if you look at kind of the plants as they grow, they get to a point where um, they're pretty tall, you know, four or five feet tall, which then um, kind of disrupts your view. So as we walk through, we really have been playing with how you can kind of meander these trails. So all of these areas kind of have their own distinct uh, context and also you move in and out of different zones. So it's not just a singular hallway with gardens. It's something more of an experience as you move through the space. So that was a pretty um, fun concept that we're, we're really taking advantage of and trying to figure out how we can, how we can really you know, increase uh, uh, the, the curiosity as you move through, as you go into different zones. All right, so this, you know, we took all of those lessons that we learned in these first phases and are now trying our next section of the Wild Mile. So this is the newest area opening up uh, fairly shortly. You can see it's mid-construction, but I'll walk through and kind of show you um, as it, you know, in its kind of raw form, what some of the goals and objectives are. And uh, we can, see in a couple months once these things are all fully grown if it really accomplishes those goals.
but you know you'll first notice that these walkways are a tad bit wider so one of the things we notice with a lot of these areas is if you have two groups of two a lot of people come here you know in groups of two or more walking side by side it you know it's kind of awkward to pass you know you sit there it's it's not great so we widened it a little bit to make it easier for that um it just kind of made that the general uh kind of uh piece i guess so um we also eliminated some of the um sharp angle pieces so in the other design we have a couple of these things that are on about 45 degree angles or so um to meander through and one of the things we've notice with those is because of the kind of orientation we weren't able to put as much buoyancy as we really wanted so they're a little bit less sure-footed and you know we wanted to try to see if we could eliminate that so instead of having those we just kind of have this kind of singular rectangle piece that then we undulate throughout well we're back hopefully with less wind this time we built these submerged modules these sections to test out some of these ideas on how we can create muscle habitat other fish habitat, things like that. And it, it turned out to be very successful. So we wanted to really extrapolate on that concept and build something much larger and able to accommodate a lot more species and habitat types. So this is the riverine section in the new uh, extension of the Wild Mile. And the way that it works is we'll have submerged platforms that are about you know 18 inches, two feet deep below this hanging and it will stretch you know from one side of the dock to the other so it'll offer two kind of access points to kind of interface with these things so when we bring out school groups or other people they can come and kind of gather around and see what's going on here um, in addition we'll add a lot more water plants so testing out lilies and other aquatic species um, and adding that sand and those rocks that really are kind of a, a, a cornerstone of a lot of uh, the native species habitats and essential for breeding and other things like that. So building out more mussel bunkers, mussel shelves, creating more spawning areas for fish and other wildlife and adding aquatic plants, it'll really kind of transform this into, um, I think, a pretty interesting uh, piece of the whole puzzle. You know, we'll use the learnings from this and what we see from these aquatic plants and other things like that to decide how we want to move forwards with the next section. Kind of doubling down on the same concept of building an artificial benthic layer on top of these uh, existing floating gardens. All right, so you know we started adding trees to the to the gardens. I think we did our first installation including a tree in 2019 and have kind of been iterating and learning from there. Um, and one of the things we realized, especially on the boardwalk, is this not a lot of shade down here. Um, and we're looking at, okay, how can we increase that? What can we do? How can we grow more trees and create more space like that? So we're trying something out where essentially we'll have these tree baskets, which are embedded within the actual walkway itself. So we had these things fabricated. They're these pretty heavy aluminum structures where we'll put on um, kind of a screen or rock wool or something else, and then fill it with a growing medium and then actually place them within these kind of, um, these areas right here. So these things will actually sit kind of flush with the whole whole system and we'll be able to create these um, kind of submerged areas where then you'll be able to get uh, trees that will actually grow out of the boardwalk. So we're gonna be trying, we have three of these spots on this first installation or this next section, um, we're gonna be trying a lot more of these actual baskets in other places. Uh, so just seeing how they're trying different species and different mediums to see what works and what doesn't work. And ideally try to figure this out. You know, you can get things like swamp white oak or other things that are, you know, really uh, water loving and are able to kind of live in these types of kind of submerged areas and to see if we can get it to work because it'd be pretty cool. So we have this section right here, which used to actually be the end of the learning platform, the first section of the wild. And so as we expanded, we actually towed this over and these things are pretty easy to move. You can just kind of, you know, pull them using rope and things like that. And so we shifted its position all the way back here. 
it's kind of become the end of this new section. Um, that's one of the interesting parts about this project and about kind of the approaches, the modularity and the ability to kind of transform these spaces as you know the needs or uh, kind of wants change. So um, moving this over, it provides you know the same benefit that it did over there, but now it's on this side. And as we expand, we'll continue to kind of shift this one around and push it until we have its kind of final home in uh, a phase or two in the future. So it really shows the, the dynamic nature of the project and how, how you can build something to test, to see how it works, and then expand it um, without necessarily knowing all of the details you know, years in advance. It really allows us to iterate and experiment a lot more by having kind of uh, installations like this and using kind of safe approach, which is fun.